This is an SM Media production. Hi folks, and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media East of Scotland Football Show. I'm Scotland Pace, a pleasure as always to be your host. I'm delighted to be joined by this week's special guest. It's a pleasure to welcome on the show, Manager of Armadale Thassa. It was a pleasure to welcome on Colin Strickland. Colin, it's a pleasure, mate. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me, Scott. Looking forward to it, mate. How have you been? How's, how's things been so far? Aye, uh, good, mate. Good, mate. Uh, all new. All new, obviously. My first year management and a, basically a brand new squad, but we're doing all right. We're doing all right, mate. How does it kind of feel like kind of going from, as you say, kind of playing and playing at a good level for years and, and being at Armadale for a while and being quite probably the kind of main man in terms of on the part? And then how did the job come about? Like, how was it always a, a kind of plan for you to get into management? Or did it, was it something that kind of, when we went to a side like Armadale and they were making this journey? Because you obviously had good times at like Lithgow and Bowness and things like that. What was it about Armadale that wanted you, you wanted to start your managerial career? Well, first and foremost, I, I was at Lanlithgow, obviously, for years, and I'd done a bit of the, the coaching under Brown Ferguson. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, But that was kind of during the COVID time. We'd done yeah. it, so it wasn't really a good time in terms of on the pitch. So I was 18 months there with Brown, and I could have stayed at Lanlithgow, but my dad, being obviously, he's been a manager for... I think it was 35 years and yeah. he was at Armadale and a few of my mates were there and boys that I've played with and played against and the opportunity was more to, I went to Armadale more to continue my playing career because I was I was still wanted at Lanlithgow but the playing side would have, wouldn't have been as much so I had to kind of choose what, what do I want to do, do I want to continue with the coaching or do I want to play but I felt I had a lot to offer in the park so that was the reason I came to Armadale and then I had a fantastic two years playing I was injury free. I managed to get a promotion, and, and then obviously my dad des- decided to retire, and the job came about, and they advertised the job, and it was kind of my assistant Colin Weeper pushed me to go for it, so we I, I went in for it when the applications came in. The two of us got an interview, and we obviously done pretty well in it, and then, then we got offered the job. And it's obviously interesting because Armadale obviously last season. Um, secure promotion and really impressive style but did this feel like a kind of a big step kind of moving up to the second division was it was it good to have that time before like obviously your dad was there, there was, a, there was a, a degree of continuity as well like was it a good time to take the job or did you feel like kind of going like taking over with maybe 10 or two months to go did that feel like the right thing at the time well and we actually it was a weird one actually and um, we we got a me and Colin Leeper, who were still players at the time, we got appointed managers, I think it was his February, but we mm-hmm. still my dad was going to the end of the season, so yeah. effectively we were, still, we were still players. So in the background we were doing all, all the work, trying to obviously speak to players for next season and our own players and other players and uh, for different clubs, etc. to try and get to try and get boys in the door. So and we were a bit late getting in, so we we're a bit behind in that sense, but um we, we continued the season, but the most important thing was we didn't want to be distracted for that. The, the main aim was for the club to get promoted, and fortunately, that's what we managed to do. And making the step up to the second division and just looking at the table, you are sitting in second place, 47 points in 22 games, very much similar to last season, and that you have just taken the, a really impressive start. 15 wins for 22 games. I want to touch on just some of the results. Like... Looking at your kind of results in terms of at the, the start of the season, five 0 away to Ormiston, five 0 at home to Keith, six two away to East Houses. Like, there's one thing that we can definitely say is are scoring goals, and that's been so important. I think there's only maybe one or two games you haven't scored in this season. That's impressive. Yeah, that's. A th- I think we're the third out of the the East of Scotland out of, out of the, th- the three division. I think we're the third high scorer. I think mm-hmm. it's only Broxburn and Bonnes. Obviously, Bonnes are. Or they were the same last year, they're ridiculous in terms of the amount of goals they score. I think we're third behind them. So, yeah, we've, and it's a new group as well, Scott. We've mm-hmm. brought in, I think we've got in 15 new players. Uh, over, we brought in nine in the summer and we've added five or six as the season went on. And, but uh, 
they've done they've done great. They've done great. We're obviously pushing for promotion way in my south and Thornton it looks like uh, we're in a, a bit of a race with they too, but uh, they're doing fine. We're doing fine and as I say, I have scored a lot of goals. And looking at your kinda of, your side as well, like <clears throat> players like Cammy Jackson who've been really influential how how important has it been having those kind of players who are have, have, have good experience at high level or some good players coming through as well? The good continuity in there, that's one thing that I've noticed when I, I see your results and things like that. Yeah, I Cammy Cammy's come in and done great. He's kinda he's hit he hit the ground running. He, he needed he needed to up his fitness and he's done that and he, and I was we were looking we lost Robbie Feeney who who mm-hmm. was a talisman. I played with Robbie for a couple of years and everybody who knows Robbie is the one thing about Robbie he knows where the goals were and he scored I think he scored some like fifty goals or sixty goals in the two seasons I played yeah. them and we needed to kind of replace that and Cammy's came in and fortunately he's managed to do that so we've got that number nine now who's, who's scoring goals and that's that's always important especially. If you're chasing a promotion, you're trying to get in the next league. And have you been surprised with the kind of the competitiveness, the competitive nature of the league? Because there's good sides in there. There's maybe a few sides underperforming as well. But how kind of surprised have you been just about how tight the league is? Because there are really good sides in there. Yeah, me, me and my coaching staff is speaking about it all the time. There's, there's no easy games in the league. It's very, very competitive, especially especially away from home. Uh, I think we've we've been in right right ding dongs with a few teams who they say they're the so called lesser teams in the league that are are down down the bottom half. But we've had to we've had to work really hard to go to the ninety fifth minute, ninety fourth minute, and to secure three points against two or three of these teams. So uh, it's definitely it's a really really competitive league, and you've got to earn your points. And obviously, Bonus are sitting at the top and. You'll have you'll have kind of good knowledge of them last season. I remember Wally coming on a few weeks ago and he said something interesting that they've had to change obviously the whole front line and they've adapted really well. When you've got a side like that, obviously you're kind of a marker. How important is it to try and keep tabs in them and obviously kind of look? Do you still kind of look at what Bonus are doing because that they are in front obviously in terms of points, but there must be a wee part of you thinks so that we can still get to them. Aye, well, you, you you always hope, but I'm I'm realistic as well. Listen, Bonessa are a fantastic side. Uh, we've played in my two or three seasons at Armadale. We, we, unfortunately, we've been we've been the same league as them all the way up, and they're a top side with top players, and it shows with the players that they've had that they've went on a bigger and better thing as well. So, I I've I'm not admitting it that Bonessa Bonessa will win the league. I think everybody knows that. So I've I've no qualms about that. Right, we'll move into what's been happening over the, the weekend. There's a fan, fa- fascinating weekend, a lot of good games taking place. It was obviously the, the Groundhog weekend, which I think is a, a fantastic advert as well, kind of in games at different times, and it got a really good attendance since what I've seen, so hats off to everybody who can organise that. We'll get your thoughts on Armadale's game on Friday night as we, we talk about the second division, but we'll start in the Premier Division. We had seven games, all games very, very interesting. We'll start with the... The league leaders, Broxburn, lost 3-2 away to Glenrothes. John McKenzie by a double, Stuart Cargill with a goal for them. Looking at Broxburn, I want to get your thoughts on Broxburn in a minute, but in terms of Glenrothes, like, when you look at big results over the weekend, it's probably the top. Yeah, great result for Glenrothes. Obviously, they're fighting at the, the bottom end of the table. We think there's a few five clubs and a few derbies in there, and they're all competing with each other, so that's a fantastic result, because I think it's it's only Broxburn's second league defeat of the season. Broxburn have been a bit of a train. Of, I know the coaching staff really well there. Uh, Stephen McElhone and Billy McPhee. And I worked under Stevie Pittman as well for a short time at Bonness, And they've done a fantastic job, actually. I joke with Billy and Marco that they've already, they're already up, but they're they are no getting much away. They, they know they've still got a job to do. In terms of, obviously, Broxburn, like, do you think this has been an interesting weekend for them in terms of, like, they are still 14 points clear. There's teams that have got games to make up, so it could be interesting. But do you think Broxburn, the way they've... I mean, they've been so impressive, 19 wins for 24 games. Do you think this will be a, an interesting... They've got, I mean, six games left. Do you think this will be a, a bit of a worry for them that they didn't win? Or has it just been like a, a kind of blip? I think it's just a blip. I think they'll be fine. It's shown the results, uh, the amount of times they've came, they came to behind and managed to get the three points. And I'm sure 
they'll have them back in whether it's Monday or Tuesday they train and they'll be ready to go and I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll recover for that I think they'll win the league I think I can't see past Brock's one I know Muscle Bra and Genefield not good size as well but they've got the points on the board Brock's one and it's and it's hard to it's hard to catch them once once you've got the points so be good to having the games in hand but having the points on the board is the most important thing and the games are running out as well yeah, no, absolutely, and it's it's going to be an interesting few weeks for Broxburn. Musselbra are up to third. They won uh, two 0 at home to Hutchison Vale. Moved to within a point of Hutchison Vale. They played four games less. Uh, Nathan Evans were a double. We mentioned you mentioned obviously Musselbra there. One thing that's interesting is that they've got the games like they'll be looking at Broxburn and looking at those three, three games they've got in hand, thinking right if we can get it as close as possible, it's net, it's then six points, and anything can happen in the final six games. Is that? Are Musselburgh probably the biggest threats to Broxburn? Yeah, I would say them and Genefield, I would say so. Uh, as a Musselburgh will just, uh, it's a bit like ourselves, you know, like Musselburgh will just be looking after themselves and they'll yeah. be trying to win as many games for now to the end of the season as possible and hoping Broxburn slip up. Uh, because if, if Broxburn do slip up, Musselburgh will want to make sure that they've done their job. Yeah, no, absolutely. That is a big result for Musselburgh. Uh, Danny Smith scored a hat trick for Soki Juniors, a 3 2 home win over Hallabies. It's Hallaby's first loss in eight games in the league. They've been in a really impressive run. But Danny Smith, I started covering the East, and the, he's probably been the one player that you looked at most weeks. He'll pop up for Sockey, and he's been pivotal for them. He's done great for them, Danny. I actually know Danny. It was a year, it was a year in it when Lithgow was uh, when I was there, and he's a fantastic wee player. And he, once he, he got his move to Sockey, he's kind of as you say, he's been their talisman and. He seems. I think he won the player of the year last year as well. I think he's playing a free role in the number ten area, and he's he's, he's popping up the goals for him as well. A good wee player and good lad, Danny. Yeah, absolutely. What about Halabid as well? Obviously, they they've been in a marvelous run as of late, and I don't think they'll be that. I don't think they'll be a side that I think they are. They'll be looking at that as a, a kind of a big blow, but they're more than capable of getting it run back together because it's been excellent in the past few months. Uh, they, they brought in the, the manager for your league and, and for New Brought and he's done fantastic. He's been a fantastic on it. I'm sure they'll they'll be fine, Hilly Beef. They, they've done they've had a had a bad start and then obviously had a, they've steadied the ship and had a good season. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Uh, Genefield were held by Dunbar. A late penalty from uh, Taylor Henry is, uh, gave Dunbar a a one one draw. Uh, Genefield obviously probably two points drop they'll look at but there's only two points between Genefield and uh, Dunbar Dunbar played a game more probably an even result when you look at the kind of form of both sides I don't think anybody would have said a draw wouldn't have been a fair result there No, no they're two, two good sides we played Dunbar in a cup through there and I was really impressed with Dunbar great facilities they're a good side as well they're, they're good up the top end of the pitch and uh, Hensy's got Hensy's doing well there. I think they just got promoted last year, so I think they'll be played. I think they're in a few cups as well, so Dunbar will be pleased with their season so far. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's have a look at the results. Haddington uh, three one winners over Inverkeaton. A double from Gabriel Aramena and a goal from Davis. Haddington been fairly solid. They'll probably be a bit disappointed, but they're they're sitting in a solid position. Uh, Aye, a bit similar to last year. I think I think they would have like a few teams in that league. I think. A few of them would have expected to challenge and we uh, Lithgow going out of the league, but Broxburn's obviously been that consistent that they've it's been hard for them, but uh, they'll all be looking at that for next season because that league that league will be wide open next season, I'm sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh Lincarty five, Crossgates three. I think this is a probably a massive result. Lincarty obviously leapfrog crossgates. You did get your money's worth at Lincarty on Saturday. I when Carry had done well, they've uh, actually my ex teammate Matt Baxter took over there. BK uh, doing a great job. He's played at a right good level. BK played senior all his days, so I'm pretty confident he'll keep on Carry in the division. Uh, final result: Canoe now, Pennycook now. Probably too late for Canoe to really can uh, push for survival. And Pennycook, can I know and Lewis a wee bit? I think he'll be fairly disappointed that they're no higher. Yeah, but Lewis is Lewis came in late. He came in late in pre season and he was kinda of flung on him the job and mm. I think he'll you know, they've got a young side they try to play the right way, he's trying to do the right things and they'll just consolidate this season. I'm sure Pennycook will be better for it next season. 
Uh, first division, we'll probably start with the, the big result, but probably was bigger the news after the match. St Andrews won 2 1 at home to Camelin. Uh, Ricky and Sawyers were the goals. It takes St Andrews, obviously, to within a point and Newton Grange uh, and Camelin are obviously two points above. But Gordon Wilde been dismissed at Camelin. I did not see that coming. Yeah, I was surprised myself. Obviously, they're in the, they're in the promotion places. They're still in a, they're still in a good place uh, for the promotion. and I don't know. I don't know what's happened there. If there's been a fall or there's panic, but uh, I I was pretty confident came and would, would get up with Gordon. And but they've obviously they've went and they went and changed the manager and brought in someone. But I think it's by Alan Moore and yeah, uh, like Woody Scott Woodhouse. Who, like uh, I know Scott and he's a fantastic coach, so I'm sure they'll they'll do well down there as well. Yeah, no, wish wish like, Gordon the best. As I say, I didn't didn't he really have much dealings with him, but. In terms of, I'm really surprised that that job, like he, he lost that job. I think he's he's put them in a good position. Do you think it is a case of like one thing that was jumping out to me when I looked at the kind of social media after the news? Like, do you think there's a lot of a pressure on Camelon because of what kind of what they've been, the players have been bringing in and things like that? Do you think it's been kind of panic stations for the club? Well, they've went, I think yeah, they've, since they went for some Jenna I came on, they went through two or three managers mm. and I think the expectations of those there as well. Uh, you only, I only hear for the, for the outsides, I'm not in amongst yeah. it, but you, you hear about different things and as I say, they've maybe just panicked a wee bit and, and they wanted to, for a, a, a change of face, but I'm, I'm confident Gordon, I, I think came on will get up and I, I thought they would get up with Gordon as well, I'm, I'm confident of that. What and Andrews, obviously, 2-1-1. One, one. Probably winners of the weekend with Donny Pace drawing, Camelon losing, eh, Newton Grange drawing as well. So, I mean, they've got the games to make up and you'd like to think, I, I, at, the, at the moment, you look at the table, St Andrews will probably consider themselves favourites now. They're looking at a right good, strong position, St Andrews, but it's all, be it, having the games in hand, you've obviously got to go and win them. Yeah. And it's re- looking at the league now, it's really, really competitive up that top end of the league. It's, I think it's the top five. Uh, any, any, I think Donny Pace are up. I think they'll go up. I'm, I'm pretty confident of that. But out of the other four teams, uh, you can, I wouldn't like to choose who I think you can need to toss a coin. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of Donny Pace, Drew won one at home to Leith. Uh, Martin Mohan scoring that, an early goal for Leith and then Donny Pace equalising uh, through Sam Colley. But nine men, Leith, and they managed to get a draw. So fair play to them. Great result, you know, on a great run. We went through there a couple of Fridays ago and played them in the League Cup. We're actually up 2-0. They came back, fair play to them. They beat us 3-2 in extra time. I think that that was a 1-8, 9 games in a row. So, I don't know what was a strong game at the start of the season, but they're, they're on a fantastic run just now. If they had had a better start to the season, they could have found themselves up there as well because they were good players. Yeah, absolutely. Martin Mohan obviously coming in. I think they've, they've announced a permanent deal. That's some bit of business to get him permanently. Ah, uh, well, he's effectively a lone league player, isn't he? So, mm. especially for next season, if you want to challenge in that league, uh, I'm sure he'll score plenty of goals for them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, here at Watt won, Newton Grange won. Uh, Yell with a goal for here at Watt and Jones scoring for Newton Grange. I've been really, really impressed with here at Watt lately. Like they, were, they struggled at the start of the season, but they've, they've kind of solidified. Really difficult for a, a university side, obviously, to do as well as they're doing. So, but hats off to the coaching staff there. No, I think they play the right way and they've coached the right way, and they? They're, they're they're a good they're good they're a good football side. We've we've got them in a in the quarter final of the of the King Cup right. through it, so we'll get a good look at them then. But I'm sure they'll be young, fit, and and they're, and they're coached and play the right way. Uh, other result: Blackburn impressive one for them, five one home a victory over Oakley. Uh, Chris Hunter scoring two penalties and Blackburn. Probably too late to even to, to say their promotion on, but they could finish best of the rest. Yeah, they're, they're sitting in a good position now. Uh, I think Jamie would have... I know they were relegated last season, but I think they lost a few players and stuff, and I think Jamie would have probably took that at the start of the season. And, uh, and because I, I think that's sick for sitting in, I, I think he would have grabbed your hand off for that, which yeah. would be a good season for Blackburn, because they've not got the biggest of resources. So for them to be competing in that league is uh, good for them. No, definitely. A final result on Sunday, Whitburn won, Whitehill welfare nil, and Whitburn all they can do is win. Hard fought victory by all reports. Uh, looking at the kind of games Whitburn have got coming up, you you look at the, the next couple of games, they play Newton Grange start at the end of May, but you look at their game on Saturday, the host Leith 
I think they need to win that game. Ah, uh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Whitburn, they were on a, a bit of sticky run there, uh, Whitburn. And, but to be fair to them, they, they were playing, they had a lot of tough fixtures. They, they were playing all the teams at the top end of the league. Uh, but now they've, they've kind of came out the other, other side of that and they went away on again. I think they've won, they're on, I heard Daz say the other day in his interview, they're unbeaten in four. So mm-hmm. they'll be looking to kick on and, and make, a, make a promotion. That'll be three promotions in a row, which would be incredible for them. Absolutely. We'll move into the second division and obviously we'll start on Friday night. Uh, Armadale, uh, 3-2 win over Ormiston. Ormiston obviously 2-1 up. I think Paul Adrian with a double for them and then massive comeback to secure that win. How big will that win be and how do you can overall assess the game? Well, I, I didn't think we played well. We never played well at all, Scott. Uh, <clears throat> but or, fair play Ormiston, they, they came in, they had a game plan, the match. They managed to score, I think they were in a half twice, they scored two goals and, and then were chasing the game, chasing the game and fortunately I've, I've, I've managed to get myself a goal and set up the winner, which we'll see how important that is at the end of the season. But it was really important for us to win on Friday night, especially when the South playing, playing Bonnes because if we don't take advantage of that, then you're, then you're struggling after that. So we knew that it was a big, big night for us. So we managed to, we've done it a couple of times this season, we've, We've dug to the end, so fair play to them, and we managed to bend out the three points. See, when you're you're obviously kind of as you say, kind of scoring the winner, scoring the, the equaliser, and then assessing the winner. Do you kind of feel as a, a player manager? Always interested when I speak to player managers. Do you feel more of a, a benefit kind of being on the park and being able to have instructions? Is it good to have your whoever's kind of on the bench for for you? Is it good to have that kind of communications on both sides? I know that speaking to folk at Airdrie can have been a good example. They love having the manager and assistant manager on the park, but they also love having the the guy on the touchline kinda of helping them out as well. So does that kind of is that something you're kinda of keen on it, Armadale? Well, I have tried to stay away. I've not played myself. It was a weird one because last season I actually came off the back. I scored I scored twenty seven goals and I had an injury free season. So it wasn't like I was coming to see when you've got injuries and you're needing to stop playing. So I've mm-hmm. kinda of came with that and then just Gradually phased myself out, but during the during the second half, uh, early in the second half, we spoke about it, and and I, we just knew I needed to go on. And listen, it, it worked for us on Friday. There's other times I'll go on the pitch it'll not work for us, but fortunately, we got it right on Friday night. That was the most pleasing thing. Yeah, absolutely. But we'll, we'll get through the other results in the second division. Obviously, you mentioned Bonnet Athletic four, Edinburgh South now doubles from Callum McDonald and Sandy Cunningham. That would have probably looked at that as a big result, particularly obviously Edinburgh South have been the games in hand. That would have been a, a, a pleasing result, I'd imagine. Yeah, I was down at that game actually. Bonnes probably deserved a win, especially Edinburgh South ended up going down to 10 men, so ended up being comfortable for them in the second half. They also, also missed a penalty, Bonnes, but uh, I think Bonnes, Thornton beat Bonnes down there. I think they had won 27 league games in a row at home, Bonnes, so. Every time Bonnets play at home, I think everybody expects him to win. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Thornton, Hibs, obviously, they are, they're in third place. Uh, double for McCallie and goals for McNeish and Thompson. 4-1 away win at Peeble Rovers. And they've been very good recently, Thornton, Hibs. They've been excellent. <laughs> I think since we beat them through there, uh, I don't think they've lost a game. I think they've won every game. Very consistent and fair play. I think last season... With Thornton, they were nearly promoted, and I think they had a wee bump at the end of the season. So it looks like they've learned from that, and uh, they're on a on a fantastic run just now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Stirling Uni, big result for them. Six one home win over East Houses Lily. Uh, doubles from Manomi and Monroe, and goals from Mole and Bainbridge. Didn't you see that coming? A six one home win. No, no. Uh, we played East Houses a few weeks ago. Though. A stuffy side, hard team to beat, but on the big Astro at Stenhouse View with the uni and with a fit side, uh, I did expect them to win the game, but I, I didn't expect them to win with, with that scoreline. Uh, Tweedmouth, big result for them, 3-1 home win over Burnt Island, Craig Bell with a double and Bloomfield with the goal for them, and it gives Twe- Tweedmouth a bit of a breathing space for Edinburgh United, obviously, Ormiston obviously losing as well. Tweedmouth, are you surprised they're in the position they're in? Well, I never seen them at the start of the season. Uh, when they obviously they never started the season well, but we played them six, seven, eight weeks ago, uh, and they've brought on a few players since then. And we, I thought they they were they were a good football side against us. Uh, 
caused us numerous problems at the top end of the pitch. We, we ended up winning the game 4-0, but I don't think it was a 4-0 game. So I think Tweedmouth will be fine this season. They've, the boy Blinfield's a good player, I think, yeah. he's their captain. Uh, so they've, they've recruited since the start of the season. It looks like they've recruited well. The final game, Dilkeith Thistle 2, Edinburgh College 2, McTernan and Falls score for the host. I don't have the goal scorers for the visitors. Uh, very, very even result. You'd imagine both teams, there's only two points between them, both played 22 games. Who do you think will be the happier manager? I don't know. I don't know, to be fair, but that, that was always going to be a, that was always going to be a tight game. Edinburgh College are a good side. Uh, they've got good players, Edinburgh College. It's another team that we've we've kind of came up the leagues with, with, with Eamon Bonnes. So we've played them quite a lot over the last two or three seasons and I'm actually I thought Edinburgh College would be further up and more challenging a bit like ourselves because they've, they've got good players uh, Third division only two games uh, we'll start with the league leaders West Calder they moved four points get at the top of the table 4-1 away win over Linton Hotspur uh, Sinclair Gregory Jackson and Gray I put some four points clear and Saturday West Calder play back okay, that could be huge uh, That's a big one they've actually my one of my best mates, uh, is assistant manager at, at Bathgate, uh, George Bonner, and I know him and Cobb as well. So they're doing fantastic there. West Calder, they're on a, a right good run themselves, and they've still played each other three times, believe it or not. So yeah. I think it's got to come down to the three games as to who I think the two of them are promoted. I think it will come down to the three games to see who see who wins the league. But uh, West Calder on a fantastic run themselves in the league. Yeah, absolutely. Who do you think is the most likely to finish third? I think Hart Hall will finish third. I okay. think the Pumforson have we've played against them a couple of times over the years as well. They've got a good young side as well, but I think they've maybe just gave ourselves a wee bit too much to do. But uh, I know Hart Hall had a I don't think they had a good result on Saturday, so it's maybe gave them a wee the other teams a wee chance to get in there. Yeah, absolutely. There's obviously uh, Har- Edinburgh Community 132 away at Hard Hill, Nicol Bartley and Johnson. It's a big result for them. Yeah, I'm surprised at that. Surprised at that result because uh, Hard Hill have been doing well. And I watched the Edinburgh Community. I was at the Edinburgh Community Fultus game last week and they were, they were actually not a bad side. They're, they're quite a big physical side and Fultus, uh, they beat, Fultus beat them 1 0, but there wasn't much in the game. So, aye, a good result for them on Saturday. Uh, in terms of what's coming up this week, you'll look at the, the game in the second division. Armadale go to Bonus Athletic. That's a, a very interesting game. How what's your kind of preparation for it? There's obviously midweek games as well that, that will be very interesting, but that's obviously full focus on Saturday. Yeah, massive game for us on Saturday. Uh, we'll, we'll go down there. We'll, we'll train Tuesday, Thursday. We'll, we'll have a game plan and we'll, we'll, we'll see where it takes us. We're under no illusions how, how big a big a task as I've I've said it umpteen times in different interviews. Bonessa are a fantastic team. They've got fantastic players. But you just you never know. You hopefully they could have an off day and we and we're on it and we can go down there and get a result. But we'll we'll be positive. Uh, we'll go down there and we'll, we'll always try and get the three points and we'll see we'll see how the game goes and see how it pans out. Yeah, and there's obviously a few big away games coming up for us. Burnt Island, Kennaway Star and then a few home games as well. There's obviously some interesting games like Thornton Hibs in the fourth of May. I think will be will be massive. Though Keith the week after, it's it's going to be fairly. It's going to be a fairly good run. And how much are you looking forward to it? And how important is it if you clinch promotion at the end of it? Yeah, really looking forward to it. This this is what you're in football for, Scott. At the, mm. at the business end of the season, and the games mean something. We've just got to. I've said that plenty of times. We've just got to concentrate on ourselves, and we try and win as many games for now at the end of the season as possible. And hopefully that's enough to get us promotion. If it's no, it will it will mean the other teams have had to go on a fantastic run, and it will be fair play to them, and they will have deserve to be promoted. But we've got to look after ourselves, and we've got a lot of big games against teams around about us as well. So they're good games for me, and they're great games for the players to be involved in. And hopefully there'll be some big crowds there, and and we can go and we can go and get the three points, and hopefully it takes us where we want to be, and that be promotion at the end of the season. Colin, I can't thank you enough for coming on, mate. Best of luck for the rest of the season, and I've thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's Scott. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, everyone that's tuned in, folks. For more East of Scotland coverage, then please follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. 